As soon as we arrived in Puerto Aventuras, I immediately got sick with something. A lot of symptoms from top to bottom, <laughs> a bit of everything. Leaving the Riviera Maya, enjoying the light easterly breeze, we were catching fish for lunch and dinner, traveling south. So I've been feeling pretty shitty the last couple days. We've waited as long as we can possibly wait because we've already checked out. So we're on our way today. We motor sailed a lot of the day. We're on the wind vane only now, take, kind of taking our time a little bit. We slowed down a little bit, but making good headway. That work on the wind vane was worth it because that's going to take off a little pressure from me having to steer so much. Always has the best part, the best shady spot. Dr. Vainberg, Dr. Zoid Vane. Sorry. He's just calling it this this cartoon's name. Yeah. You're not making it your own. <laughs> Straight up. Kinda like the character Dr. Zoidberg, our wind vane was working, but kinda wonky like and not quite right. Perhaps it was the current. You want me to pull it up? Yeah. So we don't have a fully functioning autopilot, but we do have an automatic reel. A gift for Robbie from our friend, all I have to do is flip the switch and the line automatically reels itself in while Robbie fights with a fish on the other. However, we already had a lot of fish today already, so this one was going back to live another day. We're kind of going around the corner right now, so like we might be able to adjust to go more south momentarily. We stuck close to the shoreline, even heading into the night. Hoping to thwart the current, as usual. The plan seemed to work well, and we made good headway sailing in light winds. In the morning, we could see a city floating upon the ocean. It was of course just the cruise ship heading the same way that we were to Mahawal. We had to swerve out to sea to pass safely in behind it. And then finally, we could get out of some more current. The coastline here was totally, unsurprisingly beautiful, and the water a crystal clear blue. This area, of course, is another seaside Mexican diving hub. With the light, almost southeasterly wind now, we made a plan to stop at a small harbor that we've always wanted to visit. The entry into Shalak can only really be made in light winds. So here we were, our final stop in Mexico. A panga from the town quickly came out to meet us. and guided us through the two boys at the reef's entrance. Although we had already pretty much made it inside, we offered them some freshly caught Dorado in return. So 
that green one isn't good anymore. Breaking waves on the reef here were very visible and obvious. We were running out of time though as to how long we could get away with remaining in Mexico. So we missed out on truly visiting this quaint little town. It was a peculiar feeling finding shelter here from the wide open ocean, only behind a reef. There's one side of it, and there's the other. This buoy was supposed to be more ahead yeah. at the beginning of it, Mark, but now it's like true. It's inside of it already. The next morning we made our way back out, following the track on our chart plotter. We are entering into Belize, motor sailing. Even though the forecast shows that the wind should be consistent throughout the day, it's always lighter in the morning. And it's too light for us to just sail with the time constriction we have. We have to get in to shelter before some strong winds come tonight. And we want to do that before about 7 p.m. Hopefully we can get to where we need. We could get to where we need before dark. Basically, the forecast looks perfect on paper for heading down, but the wind is just slightly, just slightly not enough. I mean, everything takes a lot longer. If we had left a day early, if I hadn't have gotten sick, I think we could have taken the trip a lot more slowly and the wind would have been enough you know, to move three, four knots. But because I was sick, we stayed an extra day, and yeah, it kind of screwed up our timing. Now we're, I, fi I feel like we're rushing, rushing, rushing. But now that we're on the second easier half of the trip, because the current left us yesterday, last night, we officially kind of left that difficulty. Well, yeah, now it's just a matter of hoisting sails and seeing what we catch. We had a lot of fish drying out for storage, but something fresh for breakfast would be nice too. This evening, there would be stormy weather coming. We decided to enter into the Belize inner channel. There was of course some large ship traffic heading out through this main shipping channel. That evening, in the calm, protected waters, we were able to fry up all the remaining day's fish. Which would also come in handy for the following day. Where such a meal would be super easy to reheat and enjoy once again. I wonder what's in his bowl. It's not like he has fish and rice or anything. Yeah. But what Papa's eating is better. He's got those 11 spice, secret spices. <laughs>
the current seemed to be in our favor at this time. Or perhaps we were just not used to having no current in our face. But either way, the skies were wet and gray, and we were making excellent headway. Tricky boy, and tricky boy. But the trade-off of the building wind was that the storms were definitely here now. Is it fun? Sailing in the tropics. The problem is that every porthole and port light in our boat is leaking profusely. Fishing. It's like I got one, I'm like, ah, I'm just gonna leave him. He got off, and he got hit again, then he got off, and I just got hit again. Like, it's After a full day of off and on squalls, we decided to stop in at Placencia Harbor. And that evening, we were very glad that we had stopped. In the middle of the night, we were suited up fully in rain gear, ready to have to deal with a dragging anchor or worse. Smart, and they have chests on board, they can go inside the dark. Why don't they just go in the dark and write they know it's coming? Oh, you want the chopper experience? This is the chopper experience. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Oh. I'm really happy that we came on the inside of Belize, the inner Belize channel, because the weather has just really deteriorated into, into some stuff that we are really happy to not be out on the open side of the reef, on the open ocean. It was okay, it was okay sailing. A lot of reefing the main, a lot of reducing sail, and then putting sail back up, and then reducing. <coughs> now we're on our last 18 miles before Guatemala. Last night, <coughs> last night in Placencia, we had the most torrential, apocalyptic rainstorm, but the anchor just was sucking into the mud, just stuck in the mud. Uh, we were anchored pretty close to some charter catamarans, but it didn't matter. We did not budge. And then this morning we thought, hmm. We might have to stay in Placencia forever because our anchor is totally stuck in the mud. More stuck than we've experienced. Very good mud in Placencia. And now we see nothing but squally, stormy forecast ahead of us. So we might as well just sail, put on our rain jackets and, and take it.
We said goodbye to the good seamount fishing areas of Belize, and then said hello to the rivermouth debris of Guatemala. All of the rain and swirling currents seemed to be amassing garbage here as we approached the punta. We saw one other sailboat before the entrance of Livingston. This is typical here. There always seems to be at least one other crew staging their approach, waiting for the high tide. Cabos Las Punta is a very common place that people anchor for shelter and for waiting for the right tides to go into Rio. So you can go either through the Oxtang bank or around it if you just don't want to have the stress of it. Before 6 a.m., we departed with our neighbors towards Livingston to hopefully get over the shallow bar and to check into the country. A lovely, lovely day. <laughs> we had to use our sails to try and keep up with our neighbors who were doing the small hop over with only their engine. We hoped to follow in directly behind them, as we did with another boat last time entering here, because they have a deeper draft and could clear the way of any mud but also they had forward scanning depth sounder. Okay, approaching Livingston. I looked at the track on my Navionics on the phone and realized it's been exactly four years, almost exactly four years since we came in. We're hoping the track that we laid down last time is still accurate, but stuff shifts. It's the river mouth and so silt moves around. We're also following behind another vessel that was staging their approach last night from Tres Puntas. That's what it's called, right? Tres Puntas. Cabo Tres Puntas. Cabo Tres Puntas. Hmm. He looks like he might have already touched. He's like more and more sideways. And we're coming in full sail, but I think we're gonna take down sail, no? No, I need the... I want the sail to punch through the case. Eventually we caught up with them, only because they started having to plow through the mud, though. Imagine, imagine, it's a desperado. Yeah, we actually found our track uh, that we had from last time. We're going to be following that in and uh, we're going to let you know how much water there is. Uh, I think there might be a little bit more water towards our side this time. How much water do you have now? Because we are stuck. Uh, we have more than, uh, we have two meters on a depth sounder right now, and a depth sounder uh, is to have 2.5 now here. And then it got really shallow. Less than a couple of inches under our keel type shallow, but we kept on moving forward. There were a few scary shallow moments here and there, but we followed our track from several years earlier, until we dropped anchor right in front of the old hotel. So I'm very lucky. Robbie is taking taking one for the team right now, going into town, into Livingston, and doing the check-in cha-cha. First, he has to go to the SAT office, then he'll fill out paperwork, pay for it so that means walking over to a bank getting money there's like one or two atms on the main drag here and luckily everything's pretty close together and then he'll walk to the next office and he'll make the payment then he'll walk to let's say the port captain's office wherever that one is he'll make the payment and then he'll walk the paperwork back over to the office and then uh, so on and so forth which just means a lot of walking but <clears throat> the town is small, so it's just a little bit of walking. It's it's not like a it's not like he needs transportation. 
and in this way we hope to save ourselves about a hundred dollars because last time we checked in we just used Servamar. Our neighbors aboard their vessel called on the radio Servamar, which is the gentleman who specializes in accommodating the paperwork for the check-in here in Guatemala, in Livingston. And he advised us that, nope, all the officials are gonna come out to the boat, don't move, just wait there. They came out to our boat, not only our neighbor's boat, so that's good. And I guess they just wanna come and see everybody aboard, see what's going on, uh, all those officials. Then we go to shore later and do the paperwork and pay for the paperwork for all those officials. The, the harbor master told me it's basically two feet, two to three feet of soft mud, almost silt, and apparently under under the mud there is rock, so uh, you don't want to <laughs> plow too much through it because there is there is rock apparently underneath that. It's a big slab of stone, that's what the harbor master told me. They said there have been studies done and they were going to use dynamite to blast the canal in, but then they were worried that this is it's all one giant connected piece of rock and they said it might cause the entire Livingston front to collapse or some some weird the reason the government didn't want to didn't want to blast the dynamite. They didn't the survey showed that it wasn't a good idea to to blast. So at most they can remove a couple of layers of yes. silt. And it says they remove it and it fills in within a year or two or so and they do once in a while. So did it seem shallower than last time we came four no, years it ago? It seemed the same. I would say it's five feet Maybe six if you're lucky, but it, it is five feet. It's very shallow to get in. And it's super soft, so if you have enough horsepower, you can kind of punch through it. Yeah, we were surprised to see a six-foot sailboat punch through it. Yeah. I thought they were going to have to call Servamar for yeah. sure. Even doing the check-in ourselves, it only took about one more hour compared to hiring the agent. And then we had the entire other half of the day to travel upriver. There is a low-looking set of power lines near the canyon entrance, but 60-foot or so catamaran masts seem to be getting through and up the river. At this point in the hurricane season, the jungle was looking particularly green and lush with small waterfalls in many places providing fresh water along the river edge, which some locals seemed to be collecting in their canoes, and birds of prey were hunting above the canopy. Even with the winds blowing freshly from the ocean side, we found our jaunt up the river to be easygoing and stress-free, with the possibility of even stopping along the way if needed, although we didn't really want to drop anchor because it's quite deep in many places all the way up to the river's edge. There is um, a knot and a half, two knots of current coming down the river, depending on the high tide and on the rain, uh, there's a flow of tide. There's a few spots of shallowness, a few little banks along the way you have to worry about. There's one main bend where you kind of take it kind of really wide to avoid a corner, but it's, it's pretty easy. We aim to make it to at least Texan Bay, where the river opens up into a lake with some good anchoring depths before dinner time. made it to the protected little community and then kept going as the breeze picked up from directly behind us. The only part about this configuration is that the sail is blocking my fish drying. It's a whole rainbow now.
and we cruised wing on wing all day to Front Terrace, the city center of Real Dulce. We were so very happy to have made it to the heart of the protected hurricane hole that is Rio Dulce. Finally, we could breathe a sigh of relief, just take in the sights and the sounds of the jungle, and rest our little heads at anchor without a concern about hurricanes or engine problems, dragging or being blown out to sea. Until we were hit by lightning in the middle of the night. GoPro still works. <laughs> Went to the boat. First thing we needed to do was to look through the bilge in the lower area of the boat to see if water was coming in. It was like wood chips. Our LED lights had mostly all been blown out, and something wooden had exploded too. It looks like ceiling wood chips, but then... Is it possible the windows blew? Yes. Oh, fuck. Water. So there's like water coming in there. What the fuck? And expanded super rapidly with the lightning and blew a hole. In the dog food, there's pieces of electronics? What is that? Fucking switchboard just blew up. That was looking good. The battery, I was just checking smoke on the batteries. Uh, checking through these through holes? We would just see right away if through holes were leaking. Does, it, does that one look okay? Yeah. What's all the smoke? Oof, this blew up. When was off? The lightning traveled from the radio antenna down into our electrical system, blowing out the switchboard and the lights. Convinced that we were not sinking, we put our mattress on the floor, away from the windows. You were like, I don't like this. The boat behind us just got hit. Yeah. So I put everything away and turned everything off. <laughs> and you know what thought I had in my mind? It sucks to be damn. There was still lightning and thunder. And with the boat smelling like a welding shop, we tried to get to sleep. Join us next time as we go into a little more detail about what happens to a sailboat when it gets struck by lightning. trying to visualize the path that the lightning took, what systems were affected to give us an idea how to avoid this in the future, try and make sense of what happened. It definitely went down the backstay. We had a visual confirmation from Robbie that that's what he saw. Went down the chain into the water. It arced onto the solar panels. It went through the radio antenna down the wire into our electrical panel, into our electrical system of our lights and nothing that was unplugged got affected. On the depth sounder, or beside the depth sounder? What the hell? This is new, I didn't, I don't yeah. know. No, 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 that's, we didn't hit something. Maybe we did, maybe something hit. Maybe.